So uh, I'd like to welcome Benjamin Phillips uh, and thank you for uh, doing an interview with us and answer some questions that we've received about your artwork uh, with your exhibition happening here at the Ottawa School of Art and at the Shankman Centre uh, currently. And uh, absolutely thrilled to have your work here. And um, so we'll just get right into some questions. Thanks. Um, so I guess the first question that a lot of people would have coming into the show, uh, as well as one uh, that was specifically sent in, was uh, what was your inspiration for this body of work? That's a good question. Um, I think, looking back at uh, when I started this body of work, um, I was looking at, uh, because I, I, I had traveled for the first time out of the country uh, into a country that I didn't speak the language. Um, and I was very alone with the language my language that didn't relate to the language that I was traveling with. So I was, I was very aware. And traveling alone, there's no safety net a lot of times. Um, and where did you go? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I was traveling in Rome on scholarship uh, to, for my thesis at exhibition. I won a, um, a scholarship to travel for summer research. And uh, chose Rome because of its collection of antiquities that um, were made there and presented at one time in that city uh, when it was a populous ancient city. Uh, and there was ref uh, there would be examples of large scale um, and more private uh, natural uh, scale figurative art because at the time, sculpture was the medium uh, of visual communication, either for propaganda or for private collection. And um, I was looking at that. And because it's a hotspot for tourism, because of art, culture, and the Vatican, um, there's a lot of people from all over the world. And uh, I did, between afternoons and intimate museum settings uh, to shoulder to shoulder with people from all over the world. I did a lot of study of bodies, moving bodies uh, and static bodies. And uh, the, the, the work became uh, a real study of, of movement as a, as a, uh, as a, a contemporary, um, study of the body. Um, a static, still body um, didn't mean as much to me. And to, I could do a series of figures in motion uh, with uh, simple variations that could uh, allow for all kinds of different directions. So, um, back to the question. I was thinking a lot about being alone uh, and that private bubble is not being uh, of sort of reflecting on um, everything and being surrounded by so many people but not knowing anyone and being very alone. Really impregnated all, the whole series with that, um, uh, that perspective. Excellent. Very nice. Um, so when, when you're working on a specific piece, do you plan ahead what you're going to be trying to emote with that piece? Or does it sort of evolve in its own way? Mm. Um, I think it'd be best to quote uh, another sculptor, Mari Baden, who was teaching, I just retired when I was in the University of Victoria. He was a sculptor there. Um, and what he approached sculpture because he's a kinetic artist. Um, he thought of emotion and would just give it form. And with this, similar, uh, I'm thinking I, I would be captivated by 
how someone moved or carried their body or just had a particular look. And those small fragments of, uh, that I captured and sort of resonated with, I would give that a form. Excellent. And um, with the Tibetan Buddhism, you mentioned that you you're doing body casts, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. And so you've cast many different people. And so, how do you how do you decide how you're going to assemble the pieces together for a piece? Like, mm. um, it's they're not all one individual. Right. Correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a little macabre, I guess, but I started a collection of casting body parts, so I have a library of casted body parts. <laughs> and um, it just meant that I had these rudiments that I could, uh, like Lego building blocks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would work with a form, uh, and uh, I'd have sort of an idea of how, how the body should be into counterbalance and balance. Um, I've used the parts to assemble accordingly. Um, the fact that they're body castings, for me that made a lot of sense and it was important to each work because there was real contact, or contact with a real person. Mm -hmm. Even though each figure is not a real person, um, I like that um, duality of it's supposed to mean something, but like with photography, uh, it, it isn't really a reference of reality. Could be, um, but there's also a narrative and there's an overlay that um, can influence all of that. Um, I really wanted to provide a. It was important. Sorry, it's really important for the work to draw the viewer in close and intimate, and allowing parts to have detail from like the hair sticking out of from the arm or something like that. Of, um, it's curious, but it also, at that point when the viewer is sort of coding the, the puzzle of the form, because it's all these different parts, it sort of makes sense. That it's, it's familiar, but it's not. Um, I find that the, it, it's, it's a catalyst or a trigger for more personal reflection in the viewer's mind, that it, it starts becoming a personal narrative. Uh, for the person who's looking at it and trying to make sense of it. And it can become their story instead of this prescribing some sort of identity of somebody or something, which uh, I find that really amazing on how my brain works. Yeah. It's part of it. touched a little bit on, on how you achieve balance with the, with the assembly. Um, is, there, is there any other aspect of, that goes into making sure that the piece balances? Oh. Um, I mean, your, your pieces stand individually in, in such a beautiful way. Um, and I think part of what really brings them in that way is that there is no external structure. Um, they really stand individually. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the, um, it's relevant to the work. Often, some of these have um, pedestals, but um, or plinths, but that ties in with what each figure is doing. Um, but for the, the figures that are standing on the ground, I think it's relevant that they're sharing the ground, the space, entirely with the, with the viewer. It's real uh, space, um, but it's clearly not real person. Um, I think it adds to that. Um, it is a contemporary. 
it's contemporary sculpture to be sharing the space in a sense, uh, especially with the body. Um, and I also think it, it is that, um, that connection that you're sharing space is another layer on that, um, the puzzle that the viewer has to unravel yeah. um, to, in making connections with that. It's just further, that furthering that along, that there is something that it relates uh, or could relate. Um, and it also enhances the, the idea of how fragile this or any of these figures are. Um, but I'm speaking figuratively, <laughs> um, but also um, I, it's also a, a tied in with the scale and being no taller than five feet. Um, I was thinking of my grandmother. Uh, or uh, a young person, uh, you don't approach them as you would approach a regular size, a, sort of a middle-aged person or a, a young adult. Um, it's very different um, uh, out of respect and out of, um, you don't, don't want to break anybody. Uh, but my grandmother was uh, in her 90s and uh, she, was no taller than five feet by the, she was a taller woman, but as your spine retracts. And there's a visually seeming embrittlement. And I don't think that's true. She's a very, very strong woman. But um, I, I wanted to use that personal reference to uh, how you engage these sculptures. Um, and so that it, was one of them. Yeah, because it, it is incredibly engaging. Um, when you approach them, and but that sense of balance with all of the pieces um, really draws you into them. Right. Like that, that slight, um, they're like they're static, but they're not static. There's there's that sense of movement in them. That well, we've seen the body in motion in art in so many different ways. And mm -hmm. I was looking at painting and drawing just as much as uh, in video, as much as uh, sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, and equally as relevant, when you look at Francis Bacon, sort of his twitch is what made his characteristic yeah. um, contributions. One of the things so they're they're static figures, but they're this psychological twitch that uh, it's pretty it's amazing in that way. Or um, Edward Muybridge, his uh, study of bodies in motion. Um, a lot of the times I, was, I would look at his photography and, and reenact them really slowly over and over until I found a balance. And then, then again, I'm, as I'm trying to recreate that for the viewer, it's to put, I'm putting myself into that stance and then trying to create that in the figure. Uh, as much as I'm trying to get the viewer to engage and sort of see them empathize with that same in the same final product. So uh, really looking at and, and where that transitional state of balance, off balance, is where there's just a, an almost breaking point. Yeah. To tie in as another layer to that emotional fragility of, of the work. Um, and I guess also partly tied in with that, um, the, the idea that they're all white as well. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that choice? Yeah. Um, some people would say that sculpture, uh, a white sculpture um, speaks more clearly of sculptural, uh, like a, a like a modern presentation of sculpture in some sense, because it is about how the light sort of, it's all about light form mm -hmm. and mass. Um, for me, I, I would say that it's also, it ties it into um, a completely cerebral, um, it's an idea in three-dimensional form. Mm -hmm. um, with pigmentation as well, um, 
it makes it, uh, especially with such uh, emotionally visceral work, that uh, when you add color, they become very loud. Mm -hmm. um, and I really want to soft. I, I, I worked at softening the, the composition so that um, the viewer would get intimate with the work and not be repelled. Mm -hmm. um, works by uh, Edward and Nancy Keepholz were the things that I was looking at uh, of contemporary examples of, of sculpture. Um, and he, uh, they um, made figuration with pigmentation um, and a lot of sticky, like you let glue, or they both let the, often uh, there'd be glue and paint it's just allowed to drip mm -hmm. and it works for their work um, but it makes it very loud emotionally and it's difficult to be an intimate uh, for any amount of time with a shouting person yeah um, and i wanted to find a quieter way of being speaking loudly but um, softly at the same time um, about uh, well, what I had to say as opposed to yeah. social sort of injustices or things like that. This is a more personal sort of empathizing with a, with a, some, a stranger uh, in a very uh, private moment. Because there, it's, it's quite interesting that uh, between the stature and the whiteness, mm -hmm. The, the idea that they're segmented or, or assembled body parts, and but they're engaging, they're not macabre or aggressive. They're, mm -hmm. they're actually just engaging. You want to go sort of see what they're thinking. Yeah. And so that, yeah, they don't, they're, they just pull you in instead of sort of as you said, yelling at them. Yeah. Also, I think it does tie in with, uh, uh, it makes a reference to some of the source material that I'm always looking at as well, um, uh, were sculpture from antiquities. They may have been pigmented in, in their youth, but um, 2,000 years later, right. they're much more modern. Um, they may have, yeah. I think that that's also making that sort of historical. Yeah. Um, what would your most uh, what was your most useful step in becoming an artist, and what would you I guess recommend to a young artist uh, moving forward? Put the time in uh, and believe in yourself. Um, if what you're doing, uh, you can see the value in your own self. Um, that when you believe in yourself, that what you're doing is relevant. Um, it may not bring money. I mean, that's a measure that you should feel grateful for, but um, it's not a be-all and all. I, I make art because it's something that I have to do. I get depressed um, and sort of lose without that sort of um, personal exercise in that. It's as equally important as reading, as exercising, um, physically exercising, just for your own health. Um, and if you can make the time for at least 20 hours a week, regardless of what your day job is, um, you'll see rel relevant progress mm -hmm. um, and eventually you'll have to you'll stop either having to explain to yourself why it's important or explain to your friends why it's important because you'll start getting recognition probably and um, that certainly is a game changer as well when someone else a stranger sees the makes a connection with the world it validates i guess absolutely yeah and um, what are you working on next? Um, we've got a couple of projects in the middle, but uh, 
I guess a direct reference to work that you see in this exhibition is that I'm taking the vulnerability of this work um, and the body and the motion and the classical reference um, in a new direction that uh, I'm working with a natural scale, so um, I'm six feet tall, so I, I will make a figure about that height. Um, but out of a material that appears fragile, instead of has an emotional fragility to it. Um, that's more of a direct reference to the Koros figure uh, from ancient Greece, of a figure stepping forward into uh, space. Um, but at this time, it is not uh, a youthful, uh, rich kid, um, his parents could afford a memorial sculpture, but more of uh, looking at a um, someone, a transient uh, person that does is has to keep in motion. Um, so the the contrapposto of the shifted weight uh, and the connecting the mental exercise, or, or the mental stimulus of counting the muscles. Uh, so having the brain and the muscles reference in the form as a traditional contrapposto, and taking that a step further to the moment of engagement, to run, to get out of sight, um, but not in the act of running, okay. uh, but in just the initial engagement. So it's a little awkward. Um, it isn't beautiful in that sense. There is still a, a beauty to it, but it's a, it's a <laughs> the few that I've made so far. There, there's somewhere between awkward and beautiful, and for me that says a lot. <laughs> Maybe it's just how I am. Uh, I feel most of the time it's like even in my better days I feel <laughs> awkward. But uh, the material itself is uh, is like faux fragile. I'm look, I was I wanted to make a figure. Um, like you would, like an archaeologist would uh, recreate a broken vessel out of ceramic that they found in uncovering something that's over two thousand years old. Um, so, but that that kind of shards. Um, so shards of one figure. So as opposed to the fragments of the many different sort of weird references, personal references that make a figure in these, mm -hmm. it's more of the whole figure broke into a hundred pieces and then it's reassembled with a lot whenever it was found. Um, and casting it uh, in, a, in an earth casting, so I dig a hole or uh, and then uh, whatever impression um, I can get uh, that pick up from a body uh, living body, um, then that is used um, in, the, in the, the forming of the figure. So uh, it, it looks fragile instead of uh, being in motion. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, it, it's still in the working stages, but uh, these are the ideas that I reference. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Super. Well, I'll look forward to seeing that as well. As long as yeah, me too. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah. And uh, oh, cool. Telling us a little bit more about uh, about the show. Yeah, thank, thank you. you thank much. you for this opportunity.